uh, I'm a mobile developer here in SoftSurf and uh, today I will uh, talking about uh, Android application and uh, App Engine and how we can uh, connect our Android application with App Engine and uh, can um, uh, create uh, faster and uh, easy some uh, simple backend and we can uh, uh, start um, using it and start to create some data, save it and uh, modify it and uh, so on. Okay. Just to open my presentation. Okay, let's start. Uh, what is uh, Google Engine? Uh, Google App Engine is uh, a platform as a service and uh, is some uh, kind of uh, category of uh, cloud uh, computing uh, service that can provide um, a lot of things. It can provide a platform while uh, which uh, can allow your customers to develop, run, manage uh, more application uh, without uh, complexity of uh, building and uh, maintaining uh, the infrastructure. You can just um, write your code in your environment, deploy it, uh, that code, and uh, Google will uh, care for all everything. And um, you, you can uh, make a lot of stuff with uh, Google Engine, uh, how we see uh, later in uh, my presentation. Um, yeah, just uh, write your code and uh, deploy it in Google App Engine. That's uh, what you need. And uh, what we uh, really need to start um, creating our um, mobile application and uh, using this uh, Google App Engine. We need Android Studio and that's all what you, uh, we need. Uh, because uh, with Android Studio we can uh, do everything uh, what uh, we want. We can uh, create uh, our Android application on one side and on the other side we can create uh, a separate uh, model which will be backend model and um, in this uh, backend model, we will create our backend, our uh, endpoints, our uh, backend data, and uh, so on. And after that, uh, we can uh, connect these uh, two uh, sites, uh, the mobile application and the backend, and uh, all of these things, so we can do it only with Android Studio. Uh, and uh, let's... Uh, write some code. I um, I decide to create this presentation uh, in uh, some in this style to sh uh, show you some uh, screenshots because um, I think maybe this is uh, some good approach to people understand uh, quickly and uh, if you have some questions um, you can interrupt me every time in time and uh, I can uh, show you in a real environment in uh, in the moment uh, how these uh, steps are, are produced. Okay, for, for our first step is uh, to create a new Android uh, project. I guess uh, a lot of uh, you know how to do that. Uh, we can create some simple project, uh, give it uh, some name, choose uh, uh, his uh, layouts uh, and uh, so on and uh, after that uh, finished and we already have um, uh, our Android uh, application empty and uh, has only one uh, activity and one layout. The second step is uh, to add uh, our App Engine model to this uh, totally empty uh, Android application. Uh, first, uh, we can go. Uh, we have to go to File New to create new model, and uh, we will see this um, screen when we uh, have to select the Google Cloud model. 
After that, uh, we will see this screen when uh, we can uh, choose uh, from uh, uh, three types of uh, models. And um, if I open uh, some Android Studio, I can show you if uh, uh, create a new model. Now we uh, here we have three types of uh, endpoints model. Uh, first, uh, up and giant Java endpoints model is uh, the simplest uh, of these uh, three types. It uh, it contains uh, only uh, the basic functionality. Uh, the second one uh, is with uh, Google Cloud Messaging, which is uh, more uh, complex, and uh, it contains uh, some functionality about uh, Google Cloud Messaging, but uh, now we will not uh, talk about that. And the third one is with uh, servlet model. Uh, but uh, we will use, uh, for now, the simplest uh, type, uh, App Engine Java Endpoints model. And, um, yeah, I will continue in my presentation. Uh, after we choose this uh, the simplest uh, type, we can uh, finish uh, this uh, screen, and we already have uh, multiple models application. We have application with uh, two models, uh, how I already mentioned. Uh, we have two different models. One is uh, the Android application, which uh, contains um, manifest files, uh, activities, layouts, resources, and so on. And uh, the other is uh, the backend, which uh, how you can see in the screenshot, uh, for now, uh, has only two uh, classes, MyBeam and MyEndpoint, which are really simple. And uh, this is uh, created for us uh, uh, from uh, Android Studio. We will, um, we will see them later, a little bit later. And uh, yeah, now we can uh, Run every this uh, every one of these uh, two models. We can run our app or, or our backend. So uh, when uh, Android Studio created for us uh, this uh, model and um, Android application, uh, it created for us two uh, two really important uh, different uh, two really important. Uh, uh, Files. This is uh, our build grade of files. There is uh, one uh, for the application, Android application, and uh, which is uh, looks uh, something like that, where we have um, compiled the version dependencies, uh, which are to this project build types and so on, and uh, we have uh, one grade of file, build grade of file for the backend uh, model when we can find uh, some similar stuff like um, plugins, uh, dependencies, uh, uh, some, uh, some uh, properties for app engine and uh, so on. Here we can uh, see that uh, uh, in this project um, when I created, I use uh, app engine endpoints 1.9. Uh, point uh, 28. Now I think uh, the latest versus, version is uh, 1.9.38. Uh, and uh, you can update it um, this. And uh, when we decide uh, to uh, change something uh, in one of uh, these uh, two uh, two uh, models, the app or the backend, uh, we um, cut here, for example, dependencies. Um, dependencies, uh, uh, we can change uh, target version and so on. And uh, how I already mentioned, Android Studio generates uh, all this for us. And uh, what uh, else Android Studio generates for us? It's these uh, two classes. Well, the first uh, class, which is in the backend model, is MyBeam. It's a really simple class, which uh, contains only 
uh, one string data, which is my, uh, which name is my data, and uh, this uh, represents uh, our uh, classes which will uh, contain our data. This uh, can be everything uh, which uh, we want uh, to store in our backend. For example, it can be books, cards, and uh, so on. And the second class is uh, my endpoint class, which is uh, the more interesting uh, class. And here we can see that um, we have uh, some class which uh, annotations. Uh, the first annotation is uh, uh, API annotation, which uh, say that uh, which say that uh, this class uh, it will be endpoint, and um, the name of uh, the endpoint it will be my API. Uh, the domain will, uh, it will be uh, this one, and uh, so on. And uh, in this uh, endpoint we have uh, some functions methods. Uh, which uh, will represent uh, our functionality of the backend. Uh, this is a really simple example, which uh, uh, only uh, creates some uh, string and uh, pass it to the response. And uh, here we have uh, another annotation, uh, API method annotation, which uh, say that this uh, method, it will be uh, our uh, method of the endpoint, and we can use it uh, to call this functionality, which we already write uh, here in, in this method. Okay. If uh, we run the App Engine model, we we can see this uh, works. Everything uh, will, will be building and uh, running. After that, uh, we will see this message. We can uh, check our uh, backend model in uh, the local host you know, on the port 8080. And uh, another important uh, link here is uh, the second one, which uh, say that we can reach our admin uh, window in. Uh, the second uh, link where we can uh, see our data, our endpoints, and uh, uh, a lot of uh, other important things for our backend. Uh, yeah, if we open it uh, on uh, the local host, we will uh, see this uh, or something like that um, page. Um, and uh, this uh, uh, there, there is uh, only one uh, field uh, when uh, we can put some text and only one button uh, which uh, which will um, for ex uh, which exactly we will call this uh, our uh, one and only method for now in our endpoint. Uh, okay, and uh, if we um, if you open it, uh, if I open it, my Android Studio, and uh, run the backend, we can see that that in the backend building, everything builds okay, and uh, these two links are the same as uh, in the screenshots. And uh, if we uh, open some browser. Uh, and write localhost 8080, we can uh, see uh, this image. We can uh, write uh, down here some text, push the button, and uh, we will see this message, uh, this uh, response, which response is uh, returned from, uh, from our project, from, uh, from our uh, backend model. Uh, okay, let's uh, continue. Uh, yeah, this is an uh, example which I already show you. 
And uh, what is uh, the second link uh, which we already seen? The um, Apex Pore. Uh, we can reach it if uh, we not tap on this Google Cloud Endpoint Apex Pore tab, or we can write down um, the in the browser localhost 8080 slash uh, uh, underline. Um, just uh, to see how was uh, yeah slash underline e h slash admin and uh, if we open it we can see this uh, uh, this is our admin console there there is a lot of stuff like um, data store your task queries uh, and the models and uh, so on <coughs> Okay. Um, and uh, here I show these uh, screens when uh, we can um, um, found our explorer console. But um, uh, when I uh, use it for the first time, I faced with uh, some uh, problem. And uh, this possible problem is uh, you can see this uh, message um, and uh, you uh, have not uh, seen your uh, backend uh, functionality, your endpoints, your methods and so on. But uh, this is uh, fixed uh, easy. You can uh, follow this link and uh, it will show some uh, this link we will uh, follow to the Google documentation, which will explain you how you can uh, start uh, your home with uh, some uh, uh, with some um, properties uh, stuff and uh, some configuration. It's uh, easy. You you just uh, have to run this um, command, and uh, after you run it, it will opened a new uh, Chrome uh, window when you can see your backend. And uh, this is uh, the name of uh, our endpoint, which uh, we already have. And uh, uh, if you open it, uh, we will see um, Later, this, uh, uh, in this endpoint, we will list all uh, methods or functions uh, which uh, we have. And uh, we can interact uh, with them from a uh, browser, not only from uh, the device. Okay. And, uh, yeah, the next step is uh, how to use uh, App Explorer. Uh, when we open our um, endpoint in the Apex portal, we will see our uh, method we'll say hi. And uh, here, or how you can see, uh, this method um, uh, this method has only one parameter, which is string. And here we have a few. Uh, one field with uh, type string, and uh, we can uh, enter some, uh, write down some text, and after that, um, we can push uh, out, authorize execute or execute a button, and we will receive uh, some response from uh, our back backend. Uh, the response uh, is uh, 200, it's okay, and uh, the data of response is uh, high grade -o. This is uh, what uh, our met method uh, do. Okay, and now I propose uh, to create something, um, or something new, something uh, more specific and uh, more complex. Um, here I created uh, one uh, Java Bean class, which is a uh, book and it has uh, three parameters, ID, title, author, 
And uh, this is a really simple class, only with uh, properties and getters and, and, and setters. And um, then I create um, an endpoint for that uh, for that bin class, and we can uh, create that really easy. We can uh, go to this class, this book uh, class, uh, uh, tap for the right button. And uh, here, Android Studio provides to us uh, some really cool method generate cloud endpoint from Java class. And uh, we should not do anything else. Just uh, Android Studio will create for us this uh, endpoint class. Uh, it will set uh, all annotations and so on. For uh, it will uh, add the methods, uh, how you can see, um, get book, insert book, and um, so on. Um, yeah, this is uh, what uh, Android Studio create for us. Okay. Then, if we open um, our API Explorer in the browser, we can see that we already have uh, two endpoints. One is uh, the old one, uh, which is uh, generated when we created the model, and uh, the second is uh, the new one, which uh, we now created. Uh, the, the, its, its name is, uh, how you can see here in the annotation, uh, book API, and uh, now you can see here in the um, API Explorer, book API is our new endpoint. And uh, if you open this endpoint, you can see here all its methods. Uh, get book and insert book uh, are two methods in this endpoint, and we can interact with them. Okay. Now, now, uh, before to continue, maybe it's um, good uh, to to mention um, Objectify. And uh, what exactly is Objectify? Objectify is a really cool um, open source. Uh, I'm not sure it's open source, but uh, yeah, I think it's open source uh, library which uh, we can use uh, in our uh, applications. And uh, it's uh, created uh, spe especially for Google App Engine data store. Uh, and uh, with uh, Objectify, we can uh, uh, create uh, easy um, these Java Bean files, these endpoints. Uh, we can uh, um, we can uh, do a lot of uh, stuff uh, with uh, Objectify, like uh, uh, to save data, modify data, filter data by uh, some properties. Um, we can um, uh, say uh, to some um, uh, properties. It will be lazy loading, or it will not be lazy. Uh, it will not be included in the data store, or uh, it uh, can uh, be indexed, and something like that. Here I attach um, some uh, link to documentation of uh, of the Objectify and uh, how you can see here. The documentation is uh, really good. There is example and uh, so on. You can. Uh, Check it. Um, okay. Um, sorry for that. Uh, excuse me. Okay, here where I was. Okay, and now we will talking about that how Objectify help us uh, in App Engine. Uh, we uh, first uh, thing we have to do is um, we have to add uh, Objectify like a dependency in, in uh, our backend model. After that, of course, we have to sync our project to be sure 
uh, everything works correct and um, after that we can update our uh, Java Bean class and uh, the updated uh, Java Bean class uh, in and uh, endpoint class uh, looks uh, like that here in um, the Java Bean class we can um, put uh, uh, put only two notations which uh, are totally enough for now the first notation is uh, entity which um, will say that this class it will be entity in our back in our data store and the second um, notation is ID which uh, uh, we will call that uh, this uh, property it will be ID and this ID it, uh, it's unique and uh, by, by it uh, it will be safe in uh, the data store and uh, the updated uh, endpoint class looks uh, like that here you we can um, here we um, created uh, some um, functionality um, how you can see uh, for example in the first method we um, put um, the name of uh, this uh, method the path the type of the method uh, the properties uh, name and so on and with this uh, office uh, service we uh, exactly created uh, our request to the back end and uh, with this uh, simple row here uh, with this simple row here uh, office.what.typebook uh, class by ID we, you know, we um, make a request to the back end and this request, uh, request returned to us um, um, the book entity which uh, we can return uh, to our Android application and uh, there are uh, all, uh, there are uh, more three methods which are insert, update and uh, remove uh, all which uh, we need uh, for now to work with our Bing class uh, which is named book okay and uh, of course we have to not forget uh, our web.xml file which is really important and now I will show you where you can find um, this file if you go to the Android project you have uh, to open the backend uh, folder uh, web app and sorry I think uh, just uh, for a second yeah web XML yeah it looks the same and um, here is the web XML file. Here you can find um, a lot of um, stuff like uh, servlets, filters, and uh, so on. And uh, when we added um, endpoints to our backend model, it's really important uh, to come here in the web file and uh, to add this endpoint to the uh, to the uh, param values uh, in uh, in the servlet. Uh, here you can uh, see our first uh, auto-generated endpoint and uh, the second one uh, endpoint which uh, we just uh, created. And this is really important because when you run your application, he will here uh, to recognize. Uh, how many endpoints there is and um, uh, you will not find it if uh, this endpoint is not added here okay this uh, was important to mention 
Then you can check again your API Explorer and you will see all these uh, methods which we already added in our endpoint uh, class. And with these uh, methods, we already added um, uh, functionality in these methods and uh, they work uh, really. Uh, we can create uh, um, we can create entities, for example, book entity. We can uh, list them. We can remove it, update it, and uh, so on. Okay. And um, if, uh, for example, we select some of the methods, for example, this insert uh, methods, we will see here. This method uh, has uh, two parameters, title and author. And uh, here in the, the request body, uh, we, um, we have to write down these um, parameters and after that to execute uh, uh, the request. And when we execute the request, we will receive uh, response which is uh, 200 okay and this response returns uh, returns to us uh, an entity which uh, you can see has id title and author this is auto generated from uh, the backend model and uh, in this way we already um, save new entity in the data store And uh, if you uh, go to the admin uh, console uh, and select the data store viewer, here you can see all of uh, your uh, entities uh, which are uh, created with uh, this annotation entity. And uh, here, if you select, um, for example, uh, the type of um, the entity, in the, our case, book, and uh, put the button uh, list uh, entities, we will show that we already have one record in our uh, local data store. Uh, here you can see the ID, author, and title, and uh, this uh, long string is the key of the entity, of the, rec of the record. Okay, and um, after we already create some um, um, backend stuff and already have uh, some uh, Java Bean classes, some endpoint classes, and uh, we already have, uh, we already can uh, work with them, create some records in the database. Uh, in the data store and now maybe it's uh, time to show how we can connect our Android application to that uh, backend model and uh, to can uh, do all this uh, stuff create list uh, remove update uh, entities from our device um, okay how we can uh, do that and of course this is your choice what is your choice because uh, according to uh, your needs you can uh, connect your Android application to the backend model in uh, several ways you can uh, do that uh, with testing task you can do that uh, with uh, some uh, loaders uh, you can uh, do that uh, with some uh, services uh, and uh, everything else which uh, will not block your main tenant. So, of course, you have to you have to uh, connect uh, your Android application uh, to the backend model in uh, the background uh, because uh, I think for everybody is clear why. But um, yeah, uh, we have to 
a send request to our backend, uh, waiting uh, until our uh, method uh, do some stuff and uh, return to us uh, some response. And after that, to get that response and um, use it in our Android application. Okay, and how we can do that? Here you can see a um, simple example. And uh, when we uh, create our backend model from uh, the Android Studio, the Android Studio automatically updates our uh, build grade of file of the Android application and uh, the Android application uh, already has dependency to this uh, backend model. And uh, when we build it, we can um, see all endpoints from that model and uh, here you can see Bookapi and this uh, Bookapi uh, has a builder uh, which we use it uh, to access um, this endpoint and uh, here you can see that uh, the root uh, uh, URL address is um, 10.0.2 uh, on the port 8080 which uh, is uh, localhost and um, yeah this is how you can access your uh, backend endpoints Okay. Yeah, uh, now I'll show some examples how we, oh, we can do that with async task. We can create some um, async task class or inner async task class, never mind. And um, here we create a builder, which builder built for us. Um, Endpoint uh, uh, service. Uh, this is our Bookapi endpoint, and uh, with uh, it we uh, we can uh, call all of our methods which are in this uh, endpoint uh, class. Here you can uh, see we call it uh, the method insert, uh, which. Uh, um, which, uh, where we can pass a, a, a book entity to know what kind of entity to create, to insert in the data store. And here you can see we create a book entity, set it a title and author, and uh, pass it uh, to the backend endpoint. And just go execute, and that's all. When the response turns true, Everything uh, works okay, and uh, we, or, or in other ways, it turns false, something wrong, and we uh, can catch it in that exception and uh, show some message to the user. <coughs> and um, uh, in uh, the same uh, situation, uh, or uh, the other situation where we can use it, um, for example, water. In this example, I use it uh, as a task uh, water. When um, I do the same, create uh, book API, and uh, after that, uh, use it uh, the method list, which uh, uh, which uh, which uh, uh, collect all um, entities uh, from a book type uh, from the data store. Uh, from the backend and uh, receive it to us. After we call it the method, of course we have to uh, call execute and after that uh, we have to call get items to return to us a um, list of books. Um, because if we see here in the code, in our book endpoint, and our um, list method, we, we will uh, return collection response from book types. And uh, here, um, 
we collect um, all book items from uh, the, from the database and return it as a, a result. So we, you can here. Uh, I will share it later. Uh, link to the GitHub where you can find um, the whole project um, and uh, you can see all this there. Okay, that was uh, these two examples of um, how we can uh, connect our Android application with uh, the backend uh, model. And uh, what, is, what are the results from uh, this here? Uh, I made uh, some screenshots of uh, the application. This is a uh, um, do it uh, emulator. And here I have uh, some simple uh, activity which is empty and uh, has only one menu items which contains two buttons a fresh and a new book and uh, when I tap it on uh, the new book button I call um, insert uh, insert uh, method from uh, the book uh, API endpoint which will create a record of, with some um, uh, default uh, values for title and total and um, and we will, after the operation is a success, we will show uh, this um, toast message. After that, we can uh, put a refresh uh, button and we can see that this uh, is already added a record in uh, the data store. And uh, here you can see if we do this operation several times, we will add it uh, four, five, six uh, uh, records in the data store, and after we refresh it, we will see all of these um, records on our screen. And uh, if you want, I can uh, show you and demonstrate you that here I already run my backend. Now I have to run my Android application. Here I already started to an emulator. Um, okay. After that, I will show you how you can do that only not only in uh, the local environment and how you can use it not only from uh, local or in, uh, emulators but uh, from uh, every um, device and the device uh, where uh, on which you installed this application okay here our application it's almost turning. Okay, here we can see that uh, I already added some uh, records to our date store. And if I put new book, the operation is success. And after that, if I refresh it, here you can see it. Yeah, maybe there is some cached. But there is a um, title zero one zero. Maybe now there is there are will have uh, both title one one. Yeah, and we can continue in this way and uh, create it more and more. Okay, and uh, if we open it, our uh, API Explorer. Okay, uh, this is uh, the error which uh, I already mentioned. Here we started a um, new browser. And I 
not so. Okay. Localhost. Nineteen, nineteen. Oh, sorry, not, not in this way. Okay, here you can see our end, um, our endpoint. And if we go to the Explorer, we can see that. But if we go to um, the admin, localhost, 8080 of oh, sorry um, okay now okay I will uh, show you this just uh, just a bit uh, a little bit later just to remind you how was uh, uh, the link to uh, the admin okay this is uh, the example of uh, yeah, here uh, is uh, admin data store, uh, and uh, you can see here all of these uh, uh, records which uh, we already created. Uh, yes, and if we open it, this. Uh, Uh, how was this? I should mean okay. And if we open this um, admin um, window, we can list uh, all of our entities and here we, you can see which uh, you can see this on the device okay uh, looks everything uh, works fine and yeah everything works good but um, but locally yeah and uh, we want more, we want to work everywhere, not uh, only on our machine. And um, what we can do for that? We can deploy our API model to the App Engine. And uh, when we do that, all of our functionality, which we created uh, in our backend model, we, uh, we, we, we will be deployed in the App Engine, and uh, we can use it uh, from every device. Okay, and how we can do that? First, we have to create a project in Google Cloud Console. And if we open Google Cloud Console, here it's my Google Cloud Console, and uh, here I already um, created this App Engine test um, project, and you can see that there is a lot of stuff. Mm, App Engine networking, uh, Big Table, SQL storage, monitoring, and so on. And um, when we create um, this um, App Engine project and deploy our functionality here, then we can manage it from, from here. We can uh, do everything from our, with our data, and we can change it, uh, uh, remove it, and so on. If we go to data store here, 
you can see that um, I already deployed my functionality and uh, create three records of books. And here, if, for example, here I have uh, some other entities from other projects, uh, and here you can see all of my uh, list of all of my uh, entities classes, which are with notations uh, entities entity. Okay, and let's go back to presentation. And uh, here, um, first we have to create this project in Google Cloud Console. After that, we have to go back to our project and um, change uh, something really important in App Engine uh, dash web XML file. This is our application ID. And um, what is that? This is um, this ID. We can um, uh, when we create some um, project here in uh, Google Cloud App Engine, we um, we we will receive an ID of our project. And after that, when we go to our Android Studio to our project, we can find this file in the backend. Backend web app web if app engine dash web XML file. And here you can see my ID of this uh, simple project. But uh, for by default is it is um, um, just a string which uh, you can you you have to replace. Yeah, and here you have to get your ID from uh, your Google Cloud Console project and put it here. After that, you have to sign in to Android Studio with uh, your Google account, which uh, uh, with uh, which you are logging log in to Google Cloud Console. And in this way, uh, Google can synchronize your Google Cloud Console projects with your Android Studio. And when you do that, you can go to Build menu and tap Deploy Model to App Engine. This will uh, start preparing uh, your stuff and uh, start uh, uploading your files. This is uh, will be the, this uh, has to be the result in the walk, and after you see message success, all of your functionality from the backend is deployed on the Google Cloud Console project, and then you can check your real. Data, uh, your, your real backend model in this uh, URL. Just replace your project ID with your project ID. And, and this, that's it. You will see all this stuff which uh, we already see here. We, you will see this stuff, the uh, the app and the explorer or the admin, and you can um, check it on the real project, which is already deployed on the Google Cloud Console. Okay. What else? And the last but not least. Change your code in the app model. You have to change your code in the Android application code. Because of, uh, if you remember, we uh, pass uh, the localhost uh, URL. But now, here you can see it. Uh, you, you have to change that to that, to this. And here, 
you use um, this URL with your project ID, Google Cloud Project ID, Console uh, uh, Project ID, and that's it. You, you now you can access your backend model from everywhere. And um, if, uh, for example, you decide to change it something later, add uh, some uh, methods, uh, change some uh, entity properties, and so on, you can do that on your machine and on your environment, in your environment. And um, when you are done, just deploy these uh, changes to your Google Cloud, Google App Engine console project, and um, that's it. Uh, maybe it will not be, um, um, maybe the changes will not be applied immediately, but uh, for example, after uh, 30 minutes or an hour, your changes will be applied and uh, you can access your new functionality. Okay, yeah, we can uh, access your backend from everywhere. And this is uh, the link uh, to my project, you, which you can find here. It's a really simple project. This is, uh, this is uh, the whole project. You have one model for backend and uh, one model for Android application. In, your, in Android application, you have only one um, activity and uh, one async task and one order. On the backend, you have uh, one book entity class and one book endpoint class. And uh, that's all. From here, you can uh, expand uh, your functionality. You can do everything uh, what you want. Okay. Yeah, you can find um, the code there. And um, I think uh, that's what I want uh, to say. Thank you for the attention, and uh, of course, if you have uh, some questions, I will try to answer you, but uh, if I haven't, I will write you later. Okay. Okay, Krasimir, thank you for your presentation. Uh, guys, if you have questions, I think Krasimir is okay to answer them offline, right? Yeah. Uh, once again, thank you for your presentation. Um, hope to see you as a speaker again and uh, all of the rest. Guys, I'm going to see you in two weeks, our next week meeting. Uh, have a good day. Bye. Thank you for everybody. Bye. Have a nice day.